everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome back to another episode of our WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. It's a little late, and I tried to record it a few times yesterday, but my PlayStation just kept crashing. Hopefully, today, we're going to have a bit better luck. I don't know what it was. It was something to do with the, the Tag Team Championship match that we got planned for tonight that just, for some reason, just kept just destroying the game for some reason. So hopefully, I've got it working now. But let's have a quick look at the card we've got for you this evening. We're going to start things off with our Nitro Champion, Kevin Owens, taking on the former television champion here on Nitro, Neville. Then we have that Tag Team Championship match. As promised last week, Blake and Murphy with Alexa Bliss will defend the Tag Team Championships against the Young Bucks. And the Bucks have said that they do have something in plan to counteract the Alexa Bliss facts. We'll have to try and see what that's going to be. Uh, next match, what a match that is. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Chris Jericho. This game sometimes does give you some fantastic matches. And we've got Hideo Itami, the current television champion, taking on William Regal in a rivalry match, that one. So uh, maybe see Tyson Kidd at some point. Alberto Del Rio takes on our general manager, Triple H, who's finally booked himself in a match here. And uh, probably just trying to counteract any ring rust he might pick up. And if there is an opportunity for him to go for the championship, then I'm sure Triple H will definitely book his way in there. He normally, he normally does, doesn't he? And the next match is going to be CM Punk taking on Lex Luger. Again, that's a rivalry match, so you never know. We might see a little bit of Samoa Joe popping up somewhere. And our main event, a little bit one-sided, Brock Lesnar takes on Stardust. Of course, last week, Brock Lesnar attacked um, Kevin Owens after his match, uh, laid the champion out, and it looks like Brock Lesnar is heavily, heavily trying to get himself a championship match for our payback pay-per-view coming up at the end of this month. So we are going to watch four matches here this evening. We're going to skip Del Rio versus Triple H. And it's Del Rio defeating the uh, the general manager, Triple H. Maybe there is a bit more ring rust in there than we thought. We're going to actually skip Nakamura versus Jericho as much as I want to watch it. And it's a good win for Nakamura. That's going to help boost him back up. He's had a few high-profile losses of recently, and he did need that win to try and bring himself back on track. Of course, we're going to watch the Tag Team Championship match, which means we are going to skip Owens versus Neville. And it's a win, of course, for our Nitro champion, Kevin Owens. It's a bit of a shame I haven't got more time here tonight because I would have liked to have watched every single match on this card. It's a really good card, this one, and I think that's one thing Nitro have really got in their favour. So, without further ado, and uh, to shut me up as well, let's get straight into our opening match of the evening, the Tag Team Championship match. Blake and Murphy with Alexa Bliss defending against the Young Bucks. Wow, that was a hell of a... Uh... That was a hell of a, a, an effort just to get... I don't know what's happened. It's something to do with one of the guys in this match that just completely just does the computer in it. It, it crashed again. I managed to get it restarted and it took about... Taking about seven, eight minutes to, to actually load this match up. That's pretty insane. Not quite sure why. I don't know if it's the, the culmination of created wrestlers and created belts and created arenas and... That has really taken effect on this game, but it doesn't matter now. We are here. We have the match up and running. We've got Blake and Murphy making their first defense of the Tag Team Championships. Of course, they won them back at Fully Loaded from the Primetime Players when, of course, Alexa Bliss made her debut um, for Nitro and really basically won the championships of Blake and Murphy. The Primetime Players could have won the match on a couple of occasions, but... But Alexa Bliss did a fantastic job of distracting the referee, uh, distracting the primetime players as well. So it really uh, really helped Blake and Murphy out. And that's why the Young Bucks have said they have something in store to try and, uh, to try and neutralize that Alexa Bliss factor. And it'd be interesting to see just what they've got in plan here. And Blake and Murphy would be desperate to, to get a successful first championship defense. But like I said the other week, I think whoever won at this Indy Championship Tournament, this Indy Tag Team Championship Number 1 Contendership Tournament, if I should call it its full name, was definitely going to come here and win the championships. And uh, the Young Bucks, I think, are a team that definitely should. And oh, we can see exactly who the Young Bucks have brought with them this evening. It's Kenny Omega. Kenny the Cleaner. What a fantastic addition to this Nitro roster. So we have now got the Young Bucks. We've got Kenny Omega. We've got Red Dragon. We've got Kaz and Daniels. We've got the American Walls. That's nine fantastic additions to this Nitro roster over the past few weeks. And uh, this is the opportunity here for the Young Bucks to take full control and walk out of here with the Tag Team Championships. And as I mentioned a few times before, it's a little bit disappointing that there's no... Uh, 
no different trios entrances because everyone having the evolution entrance or the white family or the nation of domination is, is a little bit annoying but still you get the full effect and i like this kenny omega actually it's a different one to the one i had in our first universe mode series i was looking at the two and i don't know i just felt that this one had a better look to it and i think so far the attire definitely looks spot on and this entrance actually suits Kenny Omega quite well as, as well. And I'm a massive Kenny Omega fan. So uh, I think this is a guy that, again, is going to get his opportunities. And I think he may be pushing towards that television championship after our next pay-per-view as well. I'd love to see Kenny Omega up there doing some pretty good stuff. And I want to try and see if we can have Kenny Omega even make his debut next week in his own in-ring match. And uh, if you guys are hyped to see Kenny Omega join this Nitro roster, then do hit that like button. I need as many likes as I can possibly get because it really helps us out on these videos. And that's what it's all for, the Nitro Tag Team Championships. Are we going to get brand new Nitro Tag Team Champions here? I think the Young Bucks have, have definitely got a great opportunity to, to walk away here with the belts. And with Kenny Omega at ringside, that should really uh, neutralize that Alexa Bliss factor. We'll have to wait and see what happens. You never know in these sort of matches. And uh, it just makes you wonder as well, doesn't it? This uh, Bullet Club sort of style invasion we've had here in Nitro. I wouldn't necessarily call it an invasion as such, but obviously Young Bucks coming in. They defeated uh, Kaz and Daniels in the first round, and they defeated um, Red Dragon last week to get to this situation. And it, it it's very interesting to, to think whether there's any more possibilities for bringing any of the other members of Bullet Club here into Nitro. And... One thing that's happened recently has really tweaked my interest and I think that's something I'd like to definitely do. But I'm not going to give you any spoilers. You can probably guess those of you that, that follow a lot of wrestling and follow New Japan and Ring of Honor might be able to guess some of the other people that might be joining this uh, Bullet Club faction in the future. But uh, I think we'll stick with these three guys for now. Um, these three guys actually called the Elite in, uh, in New Japan for quite a while. I'm not quite sure if that's changed enough. They've gone back to Bullet Club or... Or what, but they, they worked very, very well together. And um, yeah, I think I think there's definitely some potential to to add more names into this Bullet Club. And so far, the Young Bucks doing a great, great job here. And it's Matt Jackson in control. And he's going to bring in Nick Jackson. That is Blake in the ring, I believe, mainly because it says on his trousers. So unless the two guys are switched trousers, then uh, we're doing pretty well. And I'm thinking Alexa Bliss at some point is going to get herself an opportunity at the Women's Championship as well. We know the Women's Division here on Nitro is not super strong. Uh, when they stole Bailey in that very first draft steal um, from Thunder, it was a great night for them. And Bailey came in the very next night on her debut and won the Women's Championship away from Alexa Bliss. We've not... Uh, Alexa Bliss, sorry, Alicia Fox. And we've not seen Bailey since then. We've not seen her defend that championship. or We haven't really seen a women's match since then, so maybe... Over the next few weeks, we can look at having that Women's Championship defender. Maybe next week we can have some sort of number one contendership match and maybe allow Alicia Fox an opportunity to get back into this one. Wow, what a power driver that is. Um, I believe that might be the Awful Waffle uh, maneuver used by... Awful Waffle? Used by, um, by Chuck Taylor. You might have to correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but it looks very familiar. And so far, the Young Bucks are dominating this one. I will say that stats-wise, these two guys are are heavily rated ahead of Blake and Murphy. And of course, if you are watching this video up to date, then uh, unfortunately, um, New Japan have, uh, have been in America doing uh, joint shows with Ring of Honor this current week. And unfortunately, both the Young Bucks in individual matches have both picked up injuries, which is pretty pretty disappointing from uh, from New Japan's point of view, especially since the, the best of the Super Juniors is coming up soon. And uh, both of these guys were scheduled to be part of that in singles competition. And uh, New Japan have had to drop them both out of the competition now due to their injury. So I'm sure they'll find some uh, replacements that are more than capable. But then again, they might not. I've seen in, in recent years there, but they're giving people buys and stuff like that if they've ended up against injured people. And it's a shame to see them both getting injured because they are both top, top quality wrestlers. And in my mind, probably the best tag team in the world at the moment, the Young Bucks. There's the pin. It's only enough for a two count. But as of yet, the Young Bucks have dominated this match. And I, I can't see Blake and Murphy walking out of here with those Nitro Championships. I don't know about you guys, but for me, this is only going to go one way. As Nick Jackson looks to be lining uh, Murphy up. And there is the super kick. In for the pin he goes. One, two. Matt Jackson taking down Blake. And there we go. What a quick match that was. The Young Bucks dominated from start to finish. And we have brand new Nitro Tag Team Champions 
Kenny Omega didn't even need to get involved. That was just so simple for the Young Bucks. It just shows the strength of the tag team division we've had so far has just not been up to scratch. And the Young Bucks, brand new tag team champions here on Nitro. And that's a really good thing for Nitro as well because it means if they do end up losing the draft match in a couple of weeks' time at Payback when they share a pay-per-view with Raw, then it means that um, it means they're not going to lose the Young Bucks because uh, they can't lose championships. Or you can't lose champions, shall I say. And this was the end of the match. Nick Jackson here with a super kick on Murphy. And I'll tell you what, after this performance as well, I don't see Blake and Murphy getting a rematch for this one. They're going to have to earn number one contendership again if they want it because this was just such a poor performance that I don't think they deserve. I do not think they deserve a rematch. So as I sort of assumed a couple of weeks back, the winners of the Tag Team Championship number one contendership tournament have gone on to easily win the Tag Team Championships. And uh, and yeah, fantastic. What a great way to start this episode. And uh, yeah, I think the Tag Team Division here on Nitro has gone from one of the weakest probably to one of the strongest now. And I can't wait to see just what we can do in the future. I'd love to see the likes of maybe Kaz and Daniels feud against this team and Maybe you can get yourself to like a tag team ladder match on the go or I'm not even sure if you can do them on this game anymore. I have to double check, but I know they dropped a lot of match types out of the game. So yeah, that'd be fantastic. So let's get on with our next match. See if it can uh, lead on with the fantastic start we've had to this episode. I'm really confused. What? 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 I'm really confused now. The game seems to have changed the match and we are going to see Brock Lesnar taking on Triple H. What, what on earth has happened here? It's supposed to be Brock Lesnar versus Stardust. I don't quite understand what's happened, but... And here comes the Nitro champion, Kevin Owens. Brock Lesnar looking to start this match against Triple H, and Owens making his way down to the down to the ring. Lesnar's not happy at all. He wants Owens to leave, but Owens is... Owens is going on to commentary by the looks of it. And that's going to be in the back of Brock Lesnar's mind the whole way through this match. He knows that Owens is going to be there. Is Owens going to be there the entire match? Or is he going to try to get involved at some point? Either way, he's got right inside Brock Lesnar's head here. And Brock is going to struggle in this one. And yeah, I don't quite understand what's happened here. It seems to be the, the, the computer seems to have uh, adjusted the matches for some strange reason. We did, we've already seen Triple H wrestle once tonight. He lost Alberto Del Rio and it looks like he's... He's put himself in another match here against Brock Lesnar, maybe trying to, uh, maybe trying to show a big victory. It would be a massive victory for Triple H if he did pick up this one. But after already wrestling one guy and losing this evening, it seems a bit odd for him to put himself in another match. And I don't quite understand what the uh, what 2K16 has done here. It seems to have got a bit crazy because I, I, I said the computer struggled a little bit, and I don't know why. Because I've not adjusted anything. We we, we created the matches. Um, well, we adjusted a couple of the matches and then we did our intro and then I just added Kenny Omega to the manager scene and then all of a sudden the whole card seems to... I wonder what the other two matches are going to be. It's going to be a little bit of a lucky dip for us now. It's going to be a bit like Mystery Vortex, um, the, the the PWG pay-per-view where we don't know what's going to happen until the uh, until the entrances happen. Brock Lesnar now throwing Triple H into the corner. And uh, Kevin Owens just waving at Brock Lesnar now and getting up on his feet and Brock Lesnar now coming outside to... To get right in Kevin Owens' face. And that allows Triple H to creep up behind Lesnar. And oh, a big right hand taking Lesnar down. And Kevin Owens putting his hands up. He hasn't done anything. And Kevin Owens just applauding Triple H. And that's clever work there by Kevin Owens. He's he's really got in the head of, of Lesnar. I said Lesnar was the one who started this. He was the one who attacked Kevin Owens last week. After Owens' match with the championship belt. And laying Owens out. And now... Uh, Getting in the head of Brock Lesnar. And Owens has actually left now. So Lesnar has got a chance to try and get back in control of this one. But at the moment, Triple H is launching Owens, uh, launching Lesnar, shall I say, into the apron, just causing some damage. Referee up to a five count. Triple H rolls in and back outside to break the count. I thought he might have tried to stay inside and, and try and pick up the, the count out of victory, but that's not Triple H's way. He wants the pinfall over Brock Lesnar. He wants to prove that he's not past. He wants to prove the ring rust is not going to affect him. Like I said earlier on, Triple H is the general manager here of Nitro. And he books himself however he wants to book himself. And he's already lost once to Del Rio here this evening. And he wants to uh, he, he wants to make up for that. He wants to prove 
to people just how good he is. And who knows, a win here for Triple H. And he'd have to start considering himself for a championship match, I would imagine. Of course, uh, it looks like Brock Lesnar is going to be the number one contender. Brock Lesnar attacking Kevin Owens a couple of weeks back. And now Kevin Owens returning the favour, trying to get in the head of Brock Lesnar. It looks like this one will continue on all the way to our payback pay-per-view. And we could end up with a cracking championship match. As Lesnar here just using his UFC skills, just grounding Triple H and trying to choke the life out of him. But Triple H back up to a standing position. Elbows to the gutter brought Lesnar to break free. Hunter now sending Lesnar into the corner. Lesnar fights back with a back elbow. But Triple H catches him with that DDT. And just how much damage did Triple H manage to do to Brock Lesnar on the outside? Has he distracted him enough? Has he done enough to potentially take him out? But obviously not as Brock Lesnar's back up and suplex city begins. There it is. The first German suplex of the match. Lesnar now bringing Hunter back up to his feet and there's another German holds his grip and brings him back up for a second German. Shades of Kurt Angle here. There's the third German suplex. Triple H is still down. He's really, really struggling. Lesnar now in for the pin. One, two. Oh, it's only enough for a two count. Lesnar can't believe it. He thought he might have the victory there after his fourth German suplex in quick succession. Triple H now there is the snapmare on Lesnar. Big kick to the back and Lesnar, if anything, that just seems to spur him on back up to his feet. And Triple H catches him straight away into that spine buster and Lesnar's head hit that bottom rope. We've seen recently in real life how dangerous that can be with the injury of Enzo Amore. Looks like he could be out for a few more weeks. With that severe concussion, he was down and out after being hit there. Triple H now sending Lesnar into the corner. There's the clothesline. And Triple H here just taking a few seconds. Like I said, he's already wrestled once here this evening, so he's going to be really low on energy now. But he's doing a fantastic job of keeping Brock Lesnar grounded in this one. And now Triple H looks to be lining Brock Lesnar up. You'd think if he hit a pedigree... He already nearly got a free count with the Spine Buster. The pedigree might just be enough. But he needs to capitalize on it straight away. Two steps forward and one step back. There's the pin. One, two, and three. And Triple H has picked up a massive, massive victory here over Brock Lesnar. But just how much did Kevin Owens get in the head of Brock Lesnar? Well, and Triple H escapes quickly. Triple H escapes very, very quickly. Lesnar's not happy. Lesnar just taking the referee out. Wow, I've not seen that cutscene either before. Lesnar taking the referee out. Obviously very, very unhappy with what has happened here this evening. Unhappy about losing. Unhappy about Kevin Owens being at ringside. And unhappy about Kevin Owens distracting him and allowing Triple H to turn this match around. So let's have a quick look at the rivalry review before we get into our next match. And here is the rivalry result. Champion Kevin Owens' mind games have started trying to throw Brock Lesnar's strategy. And it worked perfectly here this evening, didn't it, really? Uh, of course, last week, Brock Lesnar started this feud by attacking Kevin Owens with his championship belt after Kevin Owens had won the match against Ric Flair. Uh, and this week, Kevin Owens just trying to return the favour with just these little distractions and mind games that obviously came to a good effect as Triple H picked up the victory over Brock Lesnar. So, Brock Lesnar has got... Um, I've got no idea what that shield is. I've not seen that one before. So, Brock Lesnar's got himself a momentum boost and some sort of shield thing going on. Not quite sure what that symbol means. If you do know what that symbol means, please let me know in the comments section below. And uh, we can try and figure it out. I think it might be something to do with... Does it put all your defensive attributes up by 10% or something like that? I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty much guessing that. But uh, if you do know, let me know on that one. And uh, Triple H has picked up a hot streak after two successive victories, apparently, even though he lost earlier on to Alberto Del Rio. That's a bit of a strange one. Triple H has become more bold from this one, uh, less egotistical and less desperate. A great win here for Triple H. And with a win like that, you can consider maybe putting himself back into that championship picture at some point. Uh, like I said, he sort of writes this for himself, but it's going to be difficult because it's not just Brock Lesnar in there. You've got guys like CM Punk. You've got guys like Samoa Joe. Um, obviously Kevin Owens the champion, Shinsuke Nakamura, so there's a lot of big, big names for Triple H to get through, and it makes you wonder if he wants to or not. You don't want to really put yourself in a situation where you can pick up more losses against some very, very good wrestlers. But let's get into our next match and just see what the computer's done. See if it's randomised any more matches for us. 
And it has randomized some more matches. And don't get me wrong, I'm very, very happy about this one. CM Punk vs Shinsuke Nakamura is a fantastic match. But I, I'm just perplexed why the game has done this. I really can't understand it. But either way, I'm very, very happy. Although Shinsuke Nakamura has already wrestled once this evening. He's already defeated Chris Jericho. So I'm unsure why the computers booked this match. But uh, still, let's get straight into it. Let's just see how good this match would be between Punk and Nakamura. And here we go. It looks like we're going to see a very, very similar cutscene to the last match. As out comes Samoa Joe. Of course, these two guys collided last week in our main event. It was a cracking match last week. And it looks like Joe's trying to get in the uh, in the mind of, Chris, uh, of, of CM Punk. Sorry. And I'll tell you what, wouldn't that be an incredible triple threat? Look at the three guys in the ring right now. How amazing would that be as a triple threat match? <laughs> But yeah, Samoa Joe takes a seat at ringside. Hopefully it's not going to be exactly the same as what we saw in the previous match because I really don't want to see the same thing over and over again. But still, it looks like it's going to be pretty damn uh, close. And big running knee strike there by CM Punk just taking, taking uh, Shinsuke Nakamura out straight away. I do believe um, in that sort of situation, it does give the, uh, the opponent a boost as well. So I think Nakamura may start with, uh, a, with a signature move straight away. Which makes it a little bit easier for him to win the match. And I think that's just a way of trying to uh, trying to give the cutscene a little bit more use, if that makes sense. So we don't want a cutscene just for the sake of it. We want a cutscene that makes sort of sense. And uh, yeah, that's a, I think that's a good thing, really. And obviously it worked out in the last match with Triple H who picked up a big victory against Brock Lesnar. And it makes me wonder now what is going to be our main event here this evening. We know that the other rivalry match at the beginning of the show was going to be Hideo Itami taking on William Regal. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they've got planned in for the next match. Would it be Hideo Itami versus Regal? Would it, would it be even be Hideo Itami? It might not. It might end up being Tyson Kidd, the other part of that feud. It's difficult to really see what's going on at the moment. I don't understand why the game has, has changed the matches. I really don't understand that. But uh, ah, it's not too bad, is it really? It's just a little bit of a shame that the two guys it's picked to put into these matches have already wrestled once this evening uh, in the shape of obviously Shinsuke Nakamura and Triple H. Then again, it wasn't too bad for Triple H. Because Triple H actually lost his match earlier on to Alberto Del Rio, whereas uh, Shinsuke Nakamura picked up the victory over, um, over that guy, Chris Jericho, that's his name. And I'm looking maybe uh, after the next pay-per-view of doing a Beast of the East tour for this Nitro roster, mainly because I want to see some of these Nitro guys go to Japan and really show what they can do. Uh, of course, Nakamura going back to his old stomping ground to show uh, just how what, what he's done. And it looks like we are going to get the exact same cutscene. A little bit of a shame, but uh, it's effective nonetheless. And Joe and Punk getting face to face here, and the match we saw last week was fantastic. And I'm hoping we see another one as well. Let me double check what actually happened at the end of last week's episode. I've got a feeling that, um, I can't remember who won that. Was that sort of long ago? I can't remember who won. So I, I, I recorded that much recently that I've really lost track of what's actually going on in the universe mode. Um, so I'm just going to quickly load up the uh, last week's video on my laptop and just go to the end. I seem to think that, uh, yeah, I seem to think that, yeah, CM Punk picked up the victory last week and he offered out a handshake to Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe slapped it away and now Samoa Joe coming down here trying to just basically distract CM Punk and obviously Joe wants a chance at redemption he wants a chance to to beat CM Punk and uh, you never know he might get the chance I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty much hoping we are going to lead with this feud all the way up to our next pay-per-view payback and just see how well that one goes CM Punk slides back into the ring Obviously, Joe versus Punk was one of the best feuds and one of the biggest feuds in Ring of Honor's history. It led to two hour-long draws, I believe, before um, before somebody finally picked up the win. I can't remember if that was, to tell the truth. I'll tell you what, early Ring of Honor was incredible. You had CM Punk, you had AJ Styles, you had Samoa Joe. Chris Daniels was at the top of his game then as well, and he was at the top of the card. And you had Daniel Bryan. It was just, it was such an amazing, amazing roster that Ring of Honor had. And it's a shame they got picked apart by TNA and WWE. But still, it's worked so well for them in any way because they've managed to just keep building on what they already had. And they've really put in some fantastic some fantastic events over the last few years. I think over the last couple, sort of two or three years is when they've really sort of sparked into growth. And we've seen some really good stuff from Ring of Honor. As CM Punk now taking 
Nakamura up onto the shoulders, looking potentially for a GTS. And there he is, knocking Nakamura out. Now brings him away from the ropes. There is the pin. Is it going to be enough to keep Nakamura down? One, two, and no, Nakamura kicks out. Both guys slowly back up to their feet. Nakamura, not sure how he's managing to continue on in this one. That's being hit with the GTS and Punk continues the assault, dropping Nakamura face first. And there's a neck breaker as well by Punk. Kick to the gut now, send in Nakamura off that far rope, caught him with a drop kick and another drop kick as well. Ducking the clothesline into a spinning neck breaker, taking Nakamura down. CM Punk now climbing up to the top. What's Punk got planned? He likes to use the Macho Man elbow and he hits it here. Will it be enough to finish the match off? It should be after that GTS earlier on. And again, Nakamura kicks out. Wow. Nakamura desperate for the victory here. Nakamura really needs to, to put some proof back into... Uh, back into I thought it was a rock bottom then. It's actually the Anaconda Vice. Anaconda Vice locked in by CM Punk. Don't often see submission victories, but they crop up every now and again. You never, never know. But this is not going to be one of those cases. Back elbow here by Nakamura. Brings him into the middle of the ring. As I said earlier on, this is a match I would love to have seen in real life. It's just such a shame that nothing seems to have sort of panned across the way we hoped it would. Nakamura making his debut for WWE and Daniel Bryan retiring in the same sort of month it was so devastating really there's the Kinshasa rolling Punk over and this could be another surprise victory really and Nakamura picks up two massive victories in the same evening defeating Chris Jericho and defeating CM Punk what a win that is for Nakamura and looks like Samoa Joe just as uh, Kevin Owens did in the previous match really got into the head of CM Punk and Saying that, take nothing away from Nakamura. He showed some incredible resilience in this match to be caught with the, the GTS and to be caught with that big Macho Man elbow and to fight his way through the Anaconda Vice and still survive on and pick up the victory himself. That's a pretty impressive performance here by, uh, by Shinsuke Nakamura. And I'm thinking next month maybe... I know I've said this about a few people already now, but maybe next month can be a situation where we look at potentially giving Nakamura the opportunity to go for a championship. Maybe... The television championship, because he's already had one go at the Nitro Championship and was unsuccessful. So maybe the television championship could be a possibility for him. He would be a fantastic television champion. And I can see some cracking matches against the likes of Nakamura, Tyson Kidd, William Regal as well. Be definitely one to have in that situation. And of course, as we saw earlier on, they're debuting Kenny Omega as well. So a big win here for Nakamura. Two wins tonight. He's already defeated Chris Jericho and CM Punk. So massive, massive wins for him. Really going to help boost them up the championship rankings as well. So, let's have a quick look what that means to the feud between Samoa Joe and CM Punk. And here we are, rising tensions. A tense rivalry between CM Punk and Samoa Joe heats up. So from this one, CM Punk has gained nothing really. He's become a bit more perseverant and a bit more bold from that match. And Nakamura's gained a momentum boost and a hot streak as well. He's become more perseverant, more bold, and slightly less egotistical. Not quite sure if that's realistic for Nakamura. He's uh, got an incredible ego. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, that's really going to help Nakamura out as well in the future because he's had a few big losses of recent. So uh, to get two wins and to get that hot streak and the momentum boost is really going to help him uh, pick up some more wins. Let's get into our main event and see just what the game has planned for this. It could be anything at this stage, really, couldn't it? <laughs> it is anything, basically. I don't know. Why is it picked three guys that have all been in matches already? So we're going to see the television champion Hideo Itami taking on Chris Jericho. It was scheduled to be Itami versus William Regal. Please don't be the same cutscene again. Please don't be the same cutscene again. It's not actually going to get entrances this time. That's interesting. So we're in Providence, Rhode Island. So I'm, I'm, I'm from the UK, so all these ones I'm... I'm sort of trying to assume from what I've seen in American television. Uh, I think that's Providence, Rhode Island. I think, is Rhode Island in New York? I might be wrong. Is New York a state? New York's not a state, is it? I I'm going to stop talking now because I know there's quite a lot of people that watch... I think the majority of people that watch my videos are actually American. So uh, 
I don't want to offend anyone by my poor knowledge of uh, American geographical states and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, here we go. Hideo Watami taking on Chris Jericho. Not quite sure why the game has decided, like I said, to change all these matches up and uh, to give us basically three matches that... What the... It's sort of given us the same feuds, the same idea of what we were going to see anyway, but it's given us... Um... I need to change that as well, just remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it seems to change... It seems to have changed all the opponents for the rivalries. And it seems to have picked guys that have already wrestled this evening as well. I might have to have a look at the end of this episode, just at the just at the card, and see if it actually shows that everyone's wrestled twice. Because, like I said, there's been a little bit of an issue with this card already. I've had some issues loading up the tag team match. It crashed quite a few times. So maybe that's just completely bugged out this entire event. But we have got to the main event now. We are going to be able to get the match done, and we are going to record it and... Well, hopefully we're going to get it done and recorded. We're not going to have any more issues. But this actually be a cracking match, this one. Chris Jericho taking on Hideo Itami. Who knows, a win for Jericho, and he could be pushed into that television championship uh, reign as well. And that's... I'll tell you what, the, just this roster is incredible, isn't it? If you, if you could fuse any guys together, you would have put all these guys together on, on this roster. Joe, Lesnar, Punk, Nakamura, Chris Jericho, Hideo Itami... Um, yeah, there are really some cracking ones, really, really cracking ones. And we've already seen Jericho lose to Nakamura here this evening. Can he pick up a victory over Hideo Itami? I'll tell you what, this is probably one of the best episodes of our universe we've put out so far. We've seen a great tag team championship match and brand new tag team champions crowned. We've seen um, Triple H defeat Brock Lesnar. Probably against the odds, I'd probably say. Um, mainly due to uh, to Kevin Owens just getting inside the head of Brock Lesnar. And we saw Nakamura defeating CM Punk in the previous match as well. Two fantastic matches, those last two. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see another fantastic match here this evening. If I was the book in this card myself, I probably would have rearranged it a little bit and had Chris Jericho in probably one of the earlier matches against Hideo Itami. I think uh, Triple H versus Lesnar probably should have main evented it. And I'm hoping that's something they should do next year. And I have been discussing this with Tony Wilson the last couple of days as well about just some of the things they've taken away from the game. And it's quite frustrating. And uh, he mentioned about the um, the storyline editor that used to be in the game. And I, I never really used to use that at all. And I know it was a great um, asset for a lot of guys that did this sort of thing to, uh, to help uh, create some storylines in the universe mode. I, I sort of mentioned that it would be a fantastic idea if instead of just bringing it back as a separate game mode, if they brought it back as part of the universe mode, and you could sort of write your own feuds. A, a little bit like Extreme Warfare Revenge, for those, those of you that have played it. And it's, a, it's a very small game, that one, but I think a lot of play, people have played it. If you've not played it before, basically it's a game you can download onto the PC. I think it's free of charge anyway. And um, it's sort of like a fantasy wrestling booker game. Um, and it, it's a real fun game, but it does take a lot of time and gets quite in-depth. And basically on that one, you can say... Um, this guy and this person's in a rivalry together. Um, and then you book a match at the card and you put this person versus this person. And then you get a reason. So this person versus this person. Why? Because it's a rivalry. And then you can have after the match, say Hideo Itami attacks Chris Jericho. Why? To continue the rivalry and stuff like that. And it's it's a really good way of doing it. And I think that'd be a good way to, to do it in 2K17 as well. If they allowed us to say, um, book the cards and say, we want this to be a rivalry match. And then we can say exactly what cutscenes we want to see. Or we want to say so-and-so come down to the ring with a microphone. And then we can type in text that we want the person to say. And I think that would be a really good way of doing it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you think that would be a good thing to do as well. Or do you think it might get too complicated in depth? Or I, I'd like it. I'd, I'd, I'd probably say that it's not it's not something you have to do. I would say if they did do it. It's something that you could, you could use if you wanted to. But apart from that you could also... Um, leave it to the computer to book the feud for you. Potentially, you could you could even make the storyline up. So you could say, go into storyline editor and say you want wrestler A to go against wrestler B. Then you want wrestler A to go against, I don't know, random opponent. Uh, wrestler B comes out and attacks wrestler A after the match. And then you can write your own storyline for a certain amount of time. And then when you go into the game, you can start a rivalry and say, I want to use this random storyline. And the game can book it for you for the next month, but you've always got that storyline saved to keep using in, in any occasion you want because it's just uh, it's doable. So I, I think that'd be a really good way of doing it. Um, but 
Then again, what the fans have thought about uh, 2K games and what 2K have actually offered us over the past few years has not necessarily been really what we wanted. So uh, you, you never know. There, there might be 2K might be out there uh, listing right now. It's a possibility because I've actually had some copyright claims over the last... I've never had copyright claims before, but over the last few weeks I've had a few come through now, which I don't know if it's because my channel's got to a certain size or what, but uh, yeah, it's... Um, you never know, 2K might be watching. If you are watching 2K, then please take this into mind. It would be so good if you did. And can I have some money as well? That'd be nice. <laughs> it frustrates me. I, I didn't realise when I started doing this. Not, not, I've, said, I've said on many occasions I'm not doing the YouTube to, to earn any money out of it. But there is uh, money you can earn from YouTube. Um, through advertising and things like that. And everything I have earned has gone straight back into doing the YouTube. Like buying my uh, capture card was £150. Or buying my microphone was £60. And I brought a brand new computer to, to handle more recording and editing and that sort of stuff. So I spent a lot of money doing this YouTube channel so far, and you get a few quid back here and there. Um, but 2K is one of the only companies around that do not let you monetize your videos. So I don't earn any money off any of these 2K games, which is why I do my Fallout, and um, which is why I do Foot Manager as well, because you can earn a few quid here and there on that. And like I said, it's not a massive amount at all. It's it's a very tiny amount, really, by all accounts. But it does help out with with just a couple of costs here and there, because. Like I say, I, I spent £40 on getting Kurt Angle to make that video for the channel trailer. Uh, I spent... Um, <laughs> it, it's a lot of money. And, and the little entrance videos that we've done so far for Fully Loaded and Extreme Rules, they cost a five reach of a website that, that, that have loads of standard videos in there. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that 2K have got that policy where you can't monetize your videos. But it's not a major problem. We're enjoying ourselves making them. You guys are enjoying watching them as well, which is great. I've seen a, a massive increase in the, in the channel size over the past few weeks. Since we started this new universe mode, we seem to have gained about 100 subscribers, which doesn't sound like a lot uh, to a big channel, but for me, where I've only got like 2,300 at the moment, that's a big increase, and uh, increase in views as well. So, yeah, I want to thank everyone for continuing to support the channel. It's, it's, it's really great, and uh, I'm glad you're all still watching, because I know this game's been out for a very, very long time now, and I know the hype has sort of died down a bit. When the game first came out, you expect a lot of views and that sort of stuff, but now the hype's died down a little bit, it's really good to... Um, it's really, it's really good that the fact that you guys are still enjoying it. There's a quick roll up there by Nakamura. And it's nearly a free count, as I've neglected to say a single thing about the match so far. I've just been chatting crap the whole way through, haven't I? So <laughs> I apologise for that. I have had quite a few people make comments uh, over the past few weeks saying that I talk too much and I just should shut up every now and again. I don't know what you think. I, I, I feel a bit bad because if I ever watch my videos back and there's a bit of dead air... I don't like it. I like to just be continuously talking, even if it is crap. I, I prefer to talk crap than to, to leave it in silence, but there you go. Each to their own. If I talk too much, just let me know. Elbow to the inside of the knee there by Hideo Itami. Look at that, a bit of commentary for a change. How good's that? Nakamura bringing Jericho back up to his feet. German suplex dead centre of the ring, dropping him straight on the sea there. And I don't mean sea as in some sort of innuendo. It's literally dropped him on the sea. Nakamura, Nakamura, sorry, Hideo Itami with the kicks and the strikes. We've seen this before. And that spinning kick to the gut in for the pin he goes. He's picked up wins with this in the past as well. Two. And no, it's still not enough to keep Chris Jericho down. And I am tempted at some point to try and stream some of these uh, recordings live on Twitch and... Uh, let me know what you think about that idea. The only problem would be if I do stream it live on Twitch, when I do do the editing and upload it onto YouTube, it's going to be at a slightly lower quality than this because you can't stream in HD quality because it's just uh, the Twitch can't handle it. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Would you would you like to watch any of this live? I'm thinking of maybe doing some random matches one night, maybe live on Twitch, and then uh, obviously I'll just cut them down and upload them separately on YouTube. And there's the GTS by Hideo Itami. Chris Jericho busted open, but... I don't think it's going to matter too much because this match is done and dusted. Hideo Itami, finally, one of our feud guys actually picking up a win in a, in a rivalry match. And there is Tyson Kidd signaling that he wants the championship. Hideo Itami versus Tyson Kidd, not a bad feud, not a bad match either. Looking forward to potential there, but Tyson Kidd issuing the challenge. What is Hideo Itami going to do? Let's have a quick look at the rivalry update on that one before we end our episode. I want to go back and have a look at the card as well and just see um, basically what the game has done. It's a bit crazy. 
Right, rivalry result. Trash talk. Challenger Tyson Kidd sent a strong message to champion Hideo Itami, signalling it's the end of his title reign. I, I, I just saw him motioning as a belt on his waist, but there you go. Hideo Itami uh, has gained a hot streak from this. He's already on a momentum boost as well, become more prideful, persever uh, prideful, respectful and bold, which is good. And obviously gained a rivalry now with Hideo Itami. Chris Jericho now on a cold streak. Become more persevering, more egotistical and more disrespectful from that one. But like I said, he's gained a cold streak because he's lost uh, too many matches in a row. So that's going to really affect Chris Jericho now. But uh, yeah, this feud, of course, is about Hideo Itami versus Tyson Kidd. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. Let's have a quick look at the match card and see just what happened. Okay, unfortunately, it's not even let us what happened. It's not even let us see what happened on the card here. Is it's just put us straight into Raw. So, uh, yeah, not quite sure what's gone on in this episode, but we've got through it all. We've had uh, four pretty good matches, and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. We've got brand new tag team champions in the shape of the Young Bucks. We've got um, some pretty good improvements on our rivalries as well. So, of course, if you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit that like button. It does really help me out a lot. And of course, if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe for a lot more. Of the uh, the universe mode, just ignore vacant on the screen there. I, I don't know why they're still in the rosters. <laughs> I, I used them earlier on in when we started the universe mode to hold all the championships, and uh, I evidently haven't taken them out of the uh, the rosters yet. But still, not a problem. Uh, so yeah, I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very very soon. Because this video was uploaded late, I'll see you in just a few hours for the next episode of Raw.